All right, waiting for the mic to reset. Good afternoon, Shaggy SoCal Tool for Forza. And final track guide for this 2021 Audi RS6 Savant. Uh, the final race will be at Sebring Short. So I, again, you know, much like Homestead, I, I think the nature of the circuit suits what this car does well, uh, mostly. There's still, again, first and last turns, I think, where will be a little bit of a challenge for the car. And certainly there's some braking that uh, you'll need to be really sure of. But anyhow, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we'll do standard track guide format. I'm gonna go out and run a couple of laps. Uh, then I'll do a kind of a slower track walk, uh, pointing out some stuff. Uh, hopefully give you some good info to, to go off on and for your practice. And then I'm gonna kind of run a mock race uh, just to get some AI traffic and practice my questionable racecraft. And uh, that'll do it. Um, so let's get started. So at Homestead Short, kind of an ideal testing conditions uh, medium tire 50 percent fuel let's go ahead and get started okay and down the front straight now off the start i'm going to go ahead and break up the telephone wires past the bridge so i'll break here Drop it down to third, tires are still a little bit cold. Now, bring it back to the left. 300 board is where you want to aim for. Second gear, nice little double apexer, balance the car. Happy feet. Go back in fourth. Use that curbing brake right before the line. Oh, that's a little early turn in. a lot of curbing um, that's I guess maybe that's the other uh, benefit of having a 4,000 pound car is that some curbing doesn't bug it as much as it would bug other cars Ooh, it's a little bit late third gear bounce 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 we'll run uh, one more lap it's a one flyer it's a short lap so I'm gonna break at the bridge Fourth gear, back in one and step out a little bit. I do tend to take a different line uh, than what is shown, at least as far as the uh, rubbered in surface. So, you know, you find the line, I'll point those out, but you find the line that works best for you. That's a bit better, that's what, more, what I like to do. Gear, six gear looking for 300. Need to break a little bit earlier. Okay. So let's do the track walk. So you're gonna be in fifth gear. You might put it in sixth. For me, um, braking is gonna be at the bridge. Um, and again, just, it's a huge car. A lot of times there are other cars, some of the lighter, more purpose-built race cars, we can break close to, to the uh, telephone lines that are going across the track there. But this car, you need to break about the bridge. Um, for me, it is threshold braking all the way, trying to get all my braking done by the time I get to the end of pit wall. That's about where I want to release the brake and turn in. Now, this is where I differ from um, you know, you can kind of see the rubber in surface as far as the line it takes. Uh, I don't know. I don't run. The, I haven't looked at the braking line in a while with a suggested line in a while. But uh, I tend to turn in once I get off the brakes. I tend to turn in a little bit earlier. So I will. I will turn in kind of almost aiming for for the uh, for the boom camera. That's not really the apex, but I'm trying to get the car all the way to the inside here. And then at this point, that'll kind of rejoin you know, the suggested line or the rubbered in line on the way out. Um, fourth gear, ideally, if I can get the car slowed down and balanced well, third gear, if I need a little bit more engine braking, a little bit more, you know, 
uh, help with turning. Um, let the car come out almost all the way to the right, mostly to the right. Uh, immediately start bringing it back across to the left. Uh, I think this is, this is the part of the, the, the circuit. I think it's going to catch us all out at some point or another. The braking for this hairpin on the short course uh, is comes up much much earlier than you'd expect it, and you really have to be, get on the binders, especially if you're going to run a hard, or, hard compound or medium compound. So for me, again, it's the 300 board. Um, no later, at least for me, it's no later than the 300 board, no matter what compound I'm on. And it's break, 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 break. Um, depending on the line I've taken out and how brave I am, I might cheat a little bit and use a little bit of this uh, access road here uh, to help kind of open the turn up a little bit. Uh, but regardless, I'm going to get it down to second gear, hopefully make the corner. If I do it right, when I release the brake and turn in, I'm going to clip the inside of the, the curving here. And this, ideally, this is should ideally this is just one nice long double apex corner um hit it here you're just going to balance you know balance on the throttle release and this is one of those like if you want to really want to demonstrate just how this car doesn't like doing two things at once um this will be it because you'll hit the apex here you'll roll into the throttle slightly and then what you're going to do is it, it can be a combination of you'll probably when you're ready to commit to the next corner you'll probably just lift lift the throttle slightly the car will immediately even without much adjustment in your steering angle you'll notice the front point will turn in a lot quicker you might have to check brake depends on what you're doing with your feet uh, as far as throttle and brake but ideally out here turn in go ahead and abuse the curbing abuse the grass you can go ahead and cross over this no problem second gear as soon as you're out short shift short yet short shift to third third gear up uh, keep it to the left side. You can you can open this up a little bit if you want, or you can hug the inside. Again, you can abuse this curbing here. You can cross over. What I'm finding is with this car is you can cross over the curb with the left side to the opposite side, as long as you're not all the way over onto the onto the cement uh, on the left side of the curb. So you can get on it, won't upset the car that much. But if you get off in the cement and then bring it back across. You might feel the car get unsettled so cut this a bit keep the car to the left braking i'm braking almost as i get to that center that that center white line that's in the, that's there on the uh, in the middle of the track that's what i'm aiming to, to break down to fourth maybe down to third depending on tire compound my turn in is late it's about i'm not paying attention much to the board that i'm kind of releasing and turning in at i'm mostly kind of looking like i'm trying to aim for the start of the curbing um as far as the turn in but ultimately you know if, if you you can see the tire marks on the curbing so you can tell people are getting on it a lot of times i'm probably going to cross over it either is fine again this car doesn't get the curbing here at sebring doesn't upset this car all that much cross it back over same thing here if you want to get on the curbing if you want to straddle the curbing you can go ahead and do that just be careful crossing back over um especially as you're getting to the braking but what i'm trying to do is is i always try to late apex this so that i have the car kind of as parallel to the left side of the track as possible for the braking more often than not i'll probably still have a little bit of weight transfer a little bit of weight on the the right side that then whips back to the left as I brake and turn right for this for the turn onto the back straight. But I'm gonna brake just as I get past the curbing here. You can kind of see the tire marks. You can kinda of, you can kinda of cheat over the, the white line here a little bit. So I'll probably straddle this a little bit. Brake brake turn in. Again I'm gonna go late apex this, probably cross the curbing. And if I cross the curbing and if you know I don't have to bring it back across, I can just, you know, keep the keep the right sides on the other side of the curbs and just come straight back on the course. And as you notice, I am just abusing the hell out of the exit curbing here. Doesn't really upset the car. So fourth gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear. Now we head to Sunset Bend. This is where the fun begins. Um, what I'm trying to do is on the on the on the medium of the soft tires. 
I can break at the 300 board. And what I'm actually going to try and do is I get to the 300 board. I'm going to angle it. it. This is one where I'm going to break kind of in a straight line, bringing the car back across the track. So it's not straight here and then turn. It's straight there because I'm actually going to continue to bake, break, continue to bake. Yes, let's bake some cookies. Continue to break past kind of that first right-hand kink into Sunset Bend. So break, 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 break here. You know, down to fourth gear. If I do it right, I'll be right along. I'll have the car kind of angled right along with the, the yellow line here. Hopefully not hit the inside wall. But it'll be break, break, break down to fourth gear, maybe down to third. And if I've got my braking done right, I can release here. And then the, again, because I'm braking threshold, the car's really not going to want to turn. So I need to be able to release the brakes to get the car, you know, to get the car to start, to get the front to start to turn. The danger as well is if you're still on the brakes and still heavy on the brakes and you're trying to turn the car, if you, you may end up the back end because all the weight's on the front, the back end may start to rotate out, out from behind you. It gets even worse if you brake straight off because uh, once you get off the, even though it's still cement off, off the track, um, the grip goes way down. So then it's, it's not quite as slippery as grass, but it gets a little bit slicker out there where you might feel the back end uh, you know, start to rotate. Um, so if I've done it right, I might be a little wide. I might go across the, the white line. Ideally, I'm going to try to keep it on the rubbered in surface as possible, uh, but down to third gear. And here it's a balancing game. Now I do kind of follow the rubbered in line for the first part where I'm going to aim for the inside here. Uh, just get on the yellow lines there. This is where I start to differ. I do. I like to try and keep it tighter uh, on the exit. Um, where this one seems to, you know, you can balance the car out. We'll see how my line evolves as I get used to it. But at least right now, uh, I tend to like to keep the car a little bit more to the inside. Clip the, clip the grass here. And I've kind of got the nose pointed out towards the, out towards the, the temporary lighting there. I think during the race, there's like some sort of like inflatable balloon logo tire thing that sits out there. But for me, this puts me a little bit more of a straighter angle out. I don't have to have as much wheel in. Um, again, it's, it's my preference. Who knows? Maybe as the race goes on and I get more comfortable, I can balance the car better on the rubber in line. This is the line I take. Uh, your mileage may vary. But still, third gear, fourth gear out. I'm going to let the car come all the way out, even cross over the white line a little bit. And that's a lap of Sebring short. I'll bring the car back over to the right probably be mostly to the right or mid-track by start finish so it's it's a quick lap so it's what like a minute you know minute eight or so you know on the medium so you know it might be a little bit I might be able to get a little bit quicker there but um uh, not much to it not not as complex as uh, as homestead but uh but definitely a quick lap the bumps are also again it's an old surface gives the gives gives the place character but with that, I'm going to kind of end the track guide portion and set up a mock race with what I think the race like is with some traffic and hopefully, um, you know, put my questionable uh, racing lines and racecraft to, to practice. So let's go ahead and exit and we're going to go all the way out. And hopefully we won't have weirdness happen with, uh, I don't know what happened in the Homestead one. All of a sudden, you know, it was like we were all ghosted. I'm like, no, I... I want to be able to hit people. Uh, so advanced setup. Let's go back in here. Still going to do the Audi. Oops. Go. All right. So we are doing circuit race. And do, do, do. nope, nope, nope. Need to go back here. Come on. All right. Number of laps. I'm going to guesstimate 27 laps. Random. Them. Again, we do rolling X4, which we start with 20% rubber, I believe. All the driver tires, cars. Yep, that's all good. Rules, that's good there. So we're going to go standing PI, ascending order. Uh, da -da, roll off delay. We're going to do that. I like that five, the half second delay. It spreads the field out a little bit, less punchy at the beginning. Mandatory pit stops, we'll do two. And, okay. 
let's go to Sebring. Let's see what the game gives us. Ooh, night race. Very good. Okay, tell us about Sebring. When it comes to multiple bins strung together, look for the straightest possible driving line no matter how curvy the blacktop is in front of you. That's good general advice. I was hoping for something a little more Sebring specific, but that's fine. Um, okay, so tire estimates as far as that 60%. Um, soft, medium, and hard. Five and a half laps, roughly. So depending how you are, five laps, you might be able to get six. Um, mediums, eight laps, and about 11. You should be able to get about 11, or at least I got about 11 uh, on the hard compound. So with the 27 lap race, I think when, what I'm going to try to do here is is run is run two stints on the hards and then do the final stint on the soft because that's 22 that'll that'll give me wiggle room on the soft tire at the end uh so let's go let's go look at fuel and tire and okay so if it's 27 laps it's about how much a tank lasts so we'll we'll take a risk on fuel again uh we'll see how we do and we'll go hard compound 5x tire wear and da -da. let's go ahead and start race. I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll it'll release, but I'm just gonna move to the I'm gonna move to the right, hopefully, and not get hit, and let everybody buy, and then I'll rejoin. We'll see how how well we do. Hit me. Whoa. That's where that little escape road comes in handy. Will be interesting. Can we? I'm gonna to have to break a little bit before the three board. About the four, he's gonna look for the crossover. I'm not gonna fight that at this point because. fit there but Cooler temperatures, but yeah, the front's just not. I'm not getting the car woke down there.
<laughs> you just hear the back of the tires just barely keeping uh, keeping contact. very early. time. Now that, that, the gear shift between third and fourth, I think is a little wider than some of the other gears. So just, if you're in fourth and you're having a downshift in the middle of sunset, just be careful, you know, the back end may, you know, the dip may lock a little bit and the back end may step out. Again, it's not like it's it's not snappy loose, but it's definitely, you know, it's like, oh, hey, there you go. That's not the fastest way out of that corner. That outside wall in the final turn will grab you if you're if you get too close. That's about as close as I want to get to that. Oh, no rodeo.
Mechanizer has a little bit more mechanical group than I do. Oh. It's a sharp. A little bit too early on the turn in there. I'm finally getting getting my rhythm there for sunset. We'll be able to get 11 in, that's good. So I'll get the 60% warning like right as I'm breaking for sunset. Okay, just keep it tight. There we go. All right, we're going to go one more set on the hards. We're doing fine on fuel. So pit, pit out. What I tend to do is I don't immediately join the racing line. I'll try to stay kind of to the to the right of the outside white line and then kind of rejoin, you know, 
on the exit of the corner. And it, I think it minimizes the chance of getting hit or running into somebody. So I'll be way out here. And join here. I think that just works. It's. I think it's safer. We'll find out on Thursday. Interesting. Late, 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 late. A little bit late. Fifteen seconds behind the leader.
a bit of no man's land here, huh? A bit late for the second half, so just work with it and get back on the throttle. Come on, come on, come on. It's three quarters of a second. Flirting with the outside line.
car is understeering just a smidgen more. Softs. <laughs> That's a lot of traffic I'm going to have to pass. See how many of them have to stop to pit as well. My thought is I should have a tire advantage. Oh yeah. Goodbye. Push too much. Don't want to throw it away. shift because someone was going in the pit so I wasn't expecting and didn't want to run in anybody Ringmaster's probably on softs. Do 
if we can get third. Don't think we're going to catch we. there to help get the car turned. Uh, let's set up Danny on the back stretch. Today, you shall not pass. Ah. That was a good race. And 32. So, yeah, that 27 laps, that might be... Yeah, we might be pushing 28, maybe 29. But that is... That is Sebring short uh, in this uh, Audi. Um... Again, I think two this this week two very good tracks to end on uh, with this car. Or at least, at least they're tracks that that tend to highlight the things that this car does well, which isn't much, but it is what it is. Um, so with that, hope you guys are having a good weekend, uh, and we'll see you on Thursday night. Happy racing! But I gotta watch the podium. I'm on the podium. So in third, there you go. Yay! I'm in second. Woo and we with the win. Again, hope you guys have a good weekend. We'll see you on Thursday. Happy racing.